Um, good afternoon, it's Greg here again from Photo and Video in Miraval. Um, further to our um, videos that we did on the Photo Warehouse branches and a bit of a tour, we've had some requests to demystify the world of binoculars and spotting, spotting scopes. Um, this brief video will be just a little summary for you, we're not going to do price specifics, but binoculars, if you're not lucky enough to live in a city that has a decent camera shop, are one of those things that's really hard to tell online what's appropriate for what you want to do. So binoculars come in a range of shapes and sizes. So this is the sort of classic pair of binoculars that your granddad had. This is called a pyroprism binocular and the numbers on a pair of binocular represent the magnification and the diameter of the entrance pupil. So a pair of 10 by 50 binoculars is 10 times magnification and 50 millimeters across the front. That also means they're quite a size because you don't get 50 millimeters across the front without being a reasonable size. So a pair of 10 by 50s has a light transmittance of five because 50 millimeters across here, 10 times magnification, you divide one into the other and that gives you a relative brightness. So a pair of 10 times binoculars is a hand holdable, nice power binocular and probably different variations of 10 times binoculars are what we sell most. These suit hunters, and birders and nosy parkers that want to look at their neighbours across the hill and you can hand hold them nice and sharp. You never want to fall into the trap that more powerful binoculars are better. We get it all the time when some guy in a swan dry rocks up here and he wants a pair of 16 by 50 binoculars because his mate's got 12 times. So we, we obviously try and point out that's not appropriate because you can't hand hold a pair of 16 by 50 binoculars. They really need to go on a stand or, or a support. So with binoculars, it's about appropriate, not big. So further to this, we get lots of people that really like compact binoculars. So compact binoculars are good because they're compact um, and they come in the same magnification, seven, eight, 10, 12 times. They're normally 21 to 25 millimeters across the front and this means they're less bright, but that's not the major cost. The major cost is that they can be really quite fiddly to line up with your eyes and so to bend them to the right point and to get them sharp a lot of people struggle with that. Um, binoculars you have to feel comfortable with and we get people in all the time they go oh, no I don't want binoculars they don't suit me or I can't get them right and the reason for that is that you haven't persevered or been shown appropriately so binocular compact binoculars are really good when you need compact but if you don't need them to be this small, a pair of normal binoculars will be easier to look through, more comfortable, less drawing on your eyes, and when you do get in low light, they'll be brighter. So we'll make this simple, and we'll go to what is essentially what we sell most. So these binoculars, we'll get into brand in a minute. This is a pair of 10 by 42 binoculars. This is the straight through construction, so not like your granddad had, very, uh, most binoculars now are like this and they come in a variety of prices and ranges because of the quality of the prisms and the glass and the construction and to a degree brand as I said we'll do brand in a minute so if you're a hunter or a birder then a 10 by 42 binocular like this is essentially what most people sort of settle on some some birders prefer eights slightly wider angle of view slightly less magnification so you can also use these um, for cricket, for horse racing, predominantly gallops. If you are a standard bred person, you know, you like the old sulkies and the harnesses, then that tends to be a pair of eight times pair of binoculars because eight times is slightly less magnification and at the trots the horses are closer, the, the tracks don't tend to be so um, big. You can tell I had a slightly um, disturbed childhood carting around all the horse race tracks. But yeah, ten times for gallops, eight times for trots. Birding, hunting, nosy parker, look at your neighbours, 10 times binoculars. The 42 millimetre across the front here means that the binoculars are bright enough to be good, but also easy to look through. And the reason they're easy to look through is that they have a huge entrance pupil on this end. So a really nice wide diameter at this end. And this is the secret to being comfortable to look through them. So you pick these up, you bend them to suit your head. Some people have got their eyes too close together, like I have and then you focus in the middle. Now, some people like a pair of binoculars and it's a bit tricky because 
The binocular manufacturers call them autofocus, but they're not autofocus, they're permanent focus, or um, Bushnell and Jason made them historically. And they're set at a distance and rely on your eyes to adjust, so they're not nearly as sharp as traditional binoculars. So, 10 by 42, focus in the middle, and if you have one eye that is more or less powerful than the other one, like I do, you have an individual adjustment on the side that you can adjust to make that right. Because of the huge width across the back, these are very, very easy to make a full circle of, make sharp and enjoy looking through them without them drawing on your eyes. So the eye relief at the back here is so that if you look through your glasses, uh, through your binoculars with your glasses on, you wind this back in. So this gets your eyes closest to the right point. And if you're looking at them without glasses, there will be a point in this adjustable ring that is right for you. So anybody in a shop that sells binoculars and knows this stuff will be able to set up the binoculars so that you're comfortable looking through them. So there is a point. So unless you really know what you want, it is best to get to a shop because binoculars don't necessarily get better for you if you haven't looked through them. So what I'm trying to say by that is that you can pick up a $4,000 pair of Leica binoculars, which are beautiful and they're just amazing binoculars. But for some people, then they're, they're no better than a $1,000 Nikon pair if they don't suit your head. So it's quite important to look. So we'll use Nikon as a brand. And the reason why we like Nikon as a brand for binoculars is that they have a whole lot of little steps. So you can, from Aculon, through Prostaff, through Monarchs, you can step up in Nikon, both in quality and build quality and quality of glass and the size of them and there's eights, tens and twelves along the way. We also do a lot of Hawk binoculars. Hawk are a, a brand that we don't necessarily associate um, with an optical brand like Nikon or Canon or Fuji, um, but they're a really nice pair of brand of binoculars as well. And they have comparable models along the range like Nikon, so give you a good contrast. Recently we've started doing Fuji binoculars. Um, Fuji are a brand that have historically made beautiful binoculars, but not always available in New Zealand. And we also have the new Fuji Image Stabilized binoculars. So, while we've done that now, we'll talk about image stabilization. Image stabilization of binoculars is a thing that is sort of catching on now that they've got the technology really good in the camera lenses, so it's moved into binoculars. Canon and Fuji and Nikon to a little degree have um, image stabilized binoculars, although the early model Nikon ones, I think might have been the Fuji ones relabeled. I hope the Nikon people don't hear me say that. So if you want image stabilizer binoculars, uh, they are there. They tend to be a, bit, a little bit bulkier, but the biggest thing with them is that, as I said, you can go to 10 times handheld normally, but with the Fuji image stabilized binoculars, you can go to 14 times and still expect to handhold them. So that's an option there. Um, there. They'll be in all the photo warehouse stores over Christmas. I think we're getting some more stocks of those. So, um, last bit of this. Why would you buy a spotting scope instead of a pair of binoculars? So, a spotting scope is different to a telescope. A spotting scope is a thing that is right way up and right way round. So in this prism, it corrects so that everything is as it appears. When you're looking at stars, it actually, the star doesn't mind if it's upside down and back to front. So it, an astronomical telescope is inverted. So if you use it to look at your neighbors, they'll be upside down. So this spotting scope, this particular one's a Hawk one. Once again, Nikon make them. Leica make a beautiful um, spotting scope called a Televid. That's a fantastic thing, but it's also five or $6,000. We can get them easily. Swarovski make them, they're a good product, but Endurance um, Hawk scopes are nice. The Nikon Prostaff scopes are nice. And they tend to have a zoom eyepiece that starts just above where binoculars finish. So um, a Nikon Pro Star 5 has a 20 to 60 times eyepiece and 82 millimeters across the front. So lots of light and you tend to have it at the 20 times while you find the boat out on the water and up to 60 times if you want to see how many scallops they've dragged out of the bay. So you have that option of 20 to 60 times but you'll never handhold it. So a spotting scope's always a tripod thing or a support thing. Um, once again, obviously handy for hunters. They'll often scan a hillside and find a beast 
that they'd want to hunt it down and they'll use the spotting scope to check out the quality of the animal to see if that's worth pursuing. So I think I've probably bored you enough. Um, if you can, get into a photo warehouse store to have a look. Um, if you can, better still come into photo and video in Miraval Mall in Christchurch. If there's something not in the store that you'd like to have a look at, we can easily transfer stock and we'd like to show you how to use them properly so you feel comfortable with them. Um, I've gone out of my way not to talk about price too much because the price range is huge, but you can get a really nice pair of binoculars for under $200 that may well suit you perfectly. So check out with the staff in store and we'll see if we can help. Have a nice Christmas if I don't see you before then. Thanks.